Eric Darling here <clears throat> with the unstoppable Darling data. And uh, we're going to use an often overlooked parameter for SP who is active to look at what <coughs> uh, parameter sniffing can look like while it's happening to your SQL server. <coughs> and uh, we're going to actually recycle a demo from last time, just like I promised. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to be using SQL query stress to do a thing. The thing that SQL query st stress is going to run <coughs> is, uh, well, it's going to look like the last demo that I did on what parameter sniffing looks like in Query Store. If you are watching this video, that would be the one that I'm referencing, where we use Query Store to identify queries that might be parameter sensitive. So what this is going to do is, uh, for most executions of this dynamic SQL, we are going to use the small query plan <coughs> for uh, whenever the uh, second part of the sys date time call uh, modulus by five equals zero, then we're gonna go and use the big one. So what we're gonna see is most queries finishing pretty quickly, then every five seconds, a bunch of queries taking like four, five plus seconds. Uh, there might be some more if we can introduce decent temp db contention in there we'll see what happens we'll see we'll see what we catch we don't know yet i do all these demos <coughs> uh without practicing so you can imagine how good i am when i actually do practice but anyway oh wait that's the that's the old demo we don't need that anymore you can see now where i embarrassingly copied and pasted my code so if we run sp who is active right now nothing is running nothing is running there are no rabbits up my sleeve uh and now if i run SQL query stress, and we look at what happens here, we're gonna see a column that a lot of folks often miss. And that's this column here with the AVG at the end. This is how long the query runs for on average. So every once in a while, when we see the average milliseconds still low, but the actual seconds that something is taking be pretty high, that's a pretty good sign that we are hitting a parameter sensitivity problem. Right, this has got seven seconds there on average. It's 100, 163 milliseconds. And so that's kind of what it looks like when things start getting weird. We can go look at the execution plan. The execution plan is going to look like, again, mwah, classic parameter sniffing. And what we see here <coughs> is that uh, this query was expected to, let's zoom in on this. SQL Server was expecting 4,756 rows, which, with the uh, other with the other parameter, is not is just kind of about right. But when we use the further back parameter, it is just about wrong, and so that's why we have this high number of rows here. Now, <clears throat> sometimes if we get lucky, and we look in the uh, plan, we look at the uh, plan details. We're using actual parameters and not local variables because local variables mess this up. But if we look at the parameter values here, uh, we can see exactly what it was compiled with, right? which is useful because how do we know, how can we test parameter sensitivity unless we have a starting point? And the good starting point here would be to, you know, test our query in a parameterized sort of way with, um, should be all done now, test the query in a parameterized sort of way like this. Again, this is the good parameterized dynamic SQL. Now, granted, it being sensitive to parameter sniffing is not good, but you know there are various ways of fixing that. But <clears throat> what we would want to do is kind of going back to the, the demo from the previous run, previous video, and we don't have to go 50 times to do this. Uh, we would want to test. Well, let's, let's just make sure everything is, every all things are equal here. DBCC, free proc cache. We're going to get rid of everything. And we're going to run this <coughs> with the parameter compile value that we found in the plan cache. Right, let's, let's turn on query plans for this one. It won't, won't hurt us since we're not running it 50 million times. We run that, we get the execution plan, 
And again, SQL Server's guess here was pretty gosh darn good for a range predicate, right? We got back, we, we expected 4,756 rows. We got back, oh, just about 300, oh, 200 and some odd more. Maybe actually that is pretty close to 300, isn't it? I guess it is. You know, about 300 rows extra. 300 more rows than estimated. Uh, cardinality estimated. Not just, not just a guesstimate there. And then if we are intrepid query tuners, we could go and look at what happens if we use that same execution plan, but with a value that gets more data. In this case, just like last time, we're going to go back to 2011, 1230 from 2013, 1230. <clears throat> and if we run this, we're going to see a query plan that looks fairly close to what we saw when we ran who was active. Where we got, let's see, uh, 1808340. We got 1.8 million rows back rather than the 5,000 or so rows back that we got on the other query. And of course, ending up in uh, a loop and all that stuff when you have way, way more rows than would make sense to loop over it can be rather caustic on the CPU. So we have the serial execution plan, not, not for serial, just, uh, you know, serial because SQL Server came up with the execution plan based on a parameter that was expected to return a, a low number of rows, and it did. But now that plan doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense when we have to return way more rows. Isn't that, isn't that something? Isn't that, ain't that parameter sniffing? So anyway, uh, that is what parameter sniffing will look like when you uh, use SP who is active to look at what is currently running on your server. Again, the two parameters that I typically use to figure this stuff out, one is to get average time, because I need to know if what I'm seeing is what normally happens when the query runs, right? So like, you know, you see get, get average time, the average time is normally really low, but now all of a sudden you're seeing the average time, like the average run time, like the, the actual run time way higher than the average time. Well, that's a sign that something has something has run amok with your query. Now, does it have to be parameter sniffing? Not necessarily. Your server could be under an un unduly high load. The query could be blocked. It could be uh, some other sort of resource contention going on. Right? It could be all sorts of things that aren't parameter sniffing, but if you if you use this and you are and you think that it might be parameter sniffing, you are curious about a potential parameter sniffing problem on your server, well, that's when, you know, using uh, SP underscore quickie store to look at query store data, again, that expert mode parameter we talked about in the video before this one, was a good way to figure out what was going on there. Uh, especially SQL Server 2017 and up uh, will collect uh, high-level query wait stats, and it could be really useful to look at those to see if maybe there were some weights that you wouldn't expect this query to hit like maybe a bunch of lock weights or something. So that's <clears throat> typically what I do when someone says, hey, Eric, it's an emergency. We need to pay you to fix our SQL server because that's what you do for a living. And I say, okay, what's wrong? And they say, I think it's parameter sniffing. This is one of the very first things I do. So I come in, make sure that the re remote DAC is enabled, right? The, thing, the dedicated administrator connection, very important for these things. Run SP who is active get average time, see if there's any big discrepancies between the current runtime and the average runtime columns, and then we go from there, right? We have to choose our own adventure. We have to figure, look at weight stats. You have to look at, you know, overall server load. Remember, look at old SP pressure detector. It's a good one for that. We dig into all sorts of fun things. Anyway, it's hot in here, uh, and my hair and makeup crew wasn't available today, so I'm a little little shiny. I hope that doesn't offend you too much. I hope that you, uh, you can deal looking at my shiny countenance. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to go towel myself off and then I'm going to record another video about, about SP who is active and how you can tell the difference between queries that are doing work and queries that are stuck. All right, cool. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that you will uh, find it in your lungs 
to uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can hit the 3,000 subscriber mark sometime before the 50th president of the United States, States is elected. That'd be, that'd be cool. I'm still doing SQL Server by then. Who knows? Maybe this will still be useful to some. Maybe these fossils will still be useful. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for watching. You're cool and good-looking and young. If I wasn't married, 